Hello guys, um, this is William here for a new recording. So today I'm not gonna do any coding session. I'm looking to answer uh, one question which I received on the YouTube channel, which was about how uh, does the uh, theming and customization of the UI kit is done, and also how you know I managed to go pixel perfect from the sketch file and to React Native and what are some of the recipes I'm using to, to do that. So I'd like to take some, some time to, to answer these questions. And so I looked, so I mean, doing theme in React and React Native, it's, a, it's an extremely hot topic. I, I read many articles on Medium on, on this topic. There are many tools uh, which exist. And so I've been looking uh, around and in React Native, I didn't find any solution I, I'm happy with. Uh, maybe I'm missing something and, you know, please, if I am, uh, I hope that uh, you guys will tell me and, and yeah. Um, so for instance, there are tools like, I think, uh, style components, which seems interesting, but you know, so for me, it's very important that uh, the style is statically typed. So it looks like using such library, I'm losing any static typing for my, my styles, which uh, I think is a complete showstopper. And I've actually, there is some people who are nailing this problem completely in uh, React Web and it's mat the material UI library. So if you guys do, um, React web project and you are not using the material UI beta version, you are missing out. I think uh, what these guys have been doing is with the beta, so version one beta, uh, these guys have, have been doing an amazing job and I think they have absolutely nailed the um, uh, issue of theming and customization. So I think if you have a web project, even if it's not uh, uh, you know, using uh, the material UI paradigm, you should absolutely use this library. And big shout out to you guys in the material UI community. Uh, what you've been doing is, is absolutely amazing. And I remember the first time I started to use uh, material UI in React. Uh, it was not nearly as mature as it is now. And, you know, sometimes it could be a little bit frustrating and, uh, I mean, to see how far uh, this project has come is, is just absolutely mind blowing. And I think um, they are really setting the standard in terms of uh, um, customization of uh, React Native components. And, and basically what I was looking for is the same, but for React Native. And I looked around, didn't find anything uh, uh, yeah, anything that was close, I would say, to match uh, these requirements. Um, static typing is extremely important for me. Um, so also, whatever is the solution I'm using, it needs to be strongly typed. And so what I decided to do is I decided to do it myself as long as it's uh, easy to do. So. I, I was not finding any libraries which I found, uh, which I thought was suitable. So I was like, okay, do it yourself. And then if it gets uh, crazy too complicated, you will use uh, a tool that solves your problem. And if this tool doesn't exist, maybe you will build it. And, but it, it turned out to be not so hard to, to do something. And what I did is, uh, 100% inspired from what Material UI has done because, yeah, I think they're setting the standard in this topic. Um, so I can show you a little bit. So if we look at this uh, UI, uh, sketch file, uh, there are some uh, design guidelines which are um, across used across all um, themes. And then there are some design variables which are theme specific. So for instance, here the primary color and the secondary color, which can be inferred uh, from the primary color, of course. So here you have only actually one value that um, 
changes across team, but of course, in I guess in more complex projects, you would have more of these variables. And then you have things like the typography, which um, are the same across all themes. I think you can see, um, where can I, style text. So here we have some, some typography. So what I did is that I created two files so styleguide.js, which contains um, the design guidelines, which are uh, used across all themes. So for instance, here you see the typography, which I copied, <laughs> copied and paste from, from sketch, literally. Uh, spacing and some predefined styles, which I like to use across. So for instance, the shadow and the border radius. So if you change the border radius, which is for instance, in this um, sketch file consistent in every symbols. So I make it uh, available in a single single place. So if I'm changing the border radius, the design should change consistently everywhere. So that's for the style guide. And then I have a theme uh, GS file, which essentially contains the um, primary color and the secondary color. So it's uh, essentially, yes, I have a, a create theme function, which um, is used as a Mobex store. So that makes it available for different components where it's needed. So in some, um, in some components, the primary color, like some of the theme, uh, themed variables are not used, so I don't need to to use the theme, and in some it's needed, so then I will inject the theme using Mobex. So if we can have a look at the welcome page. So I mean, let me start the maybe the app quickly so I can show you. But basically when we, so I have this theme store and I have a, a colors for each um, each theme. I think it's here, you see, so I have, for each theme I have a primary and secondary color. So I set the primary and secondary color to the store, and then I just redirect to the scene for this theme. And each component that is using the store will find the proper color. Can so you see in create theme, the primary color is white by default and you will see it's used in the welcome screen. <clears throat> so let's see, I hope it's starting. Might take a few seconds. Let me search in the meantime for some files. Let's see. Just building, building, come on. So you see, I have my three themes, and when I click on one, I'm setting the primary color. And for instance, if I change uh, primary color for food to red, it's changed automatically. All right, and how do I use these the theme within the component. So I have two functions. One is with styles and one is with theme. So um, let me think a component we could look at. Uh, to, to, to. 
maybe navigation bar is it using the theme yes so i have the with theme function which injects the theme property so here i have the theme, theme props so everything is completely statically typed and from the render function so it's uh, it's doing what with theme does it's doing uh, injecting the theme store with mobex and it's doing it in a statically uh, typed manner so it's typed safe and so it adds theme into props and i can access the primary color from from this variable and then there's a second function which is called with styles so apparently i'm using it in date picker so let's see which so 100 percent completely inspired from the way material ui is doing is that i'm uh, defining some style names and computing the style based on um, the theme so i'm computing a react native style using the the theme variable and i can access it from the render method so it depends on uh, your needs. You can either use with styles or with theme. So sometimes if you don't need the color from uh, from the render function, but you just need the styles, with styles is appropriate. There are some cases where you need to have the theme variable from the render method. I can show you an example, which is, I think here, where the gradient color, so it's not a style to set the gradient color of the progress bar, you need to, to set it from a property. So here I'm going to need to use a with theme. And so another question was how do I get, how do I manage to get so close in terms of rendering? How do I manage to get so close from sketch to react? Um, so for this, so there are many tools uh, which exist like uh, Zeppelin, I think and have code where you can import uh, a sketch design and it helps you to inspect the design and and extract information they even provide i mean they are not so useful that's not the correct website i think or is it um or they provide yeah some react native code snippet that you could theoretically uh, copy and paste directly into into your code but th that doesn't really work um to get started, maybe you find it useful uh, to use. Uh, so I have I've played with this tool. You see, uh, Avocode, Zeppelin. But you can also do it directly by inspecting the the symbols and trying to map as much as possible. You know, in, in Sketch, you have this concept of uh, symbol and overrides, which really match to React component and properties. So you can try to to respect this mapping of course in some cases it's it's a bit different but uh, you can try to respect this mapping as much as you can and you know typography size are the same of course in some cases sizes sizes are dynamic in, in react native and you're using flexbox and one thing here i did also to extract all images so what i did is that i unzipped this uh, sketch file and I think there's a folder called images, which contain all images. So I took all these images, uploaded them on, on Firebase, and I'm using a link to these images when, when needed. And yeah, honestly, no, I think, you know, that's it. And just, uh, you know, if, um, if I need something, I'm looking at the symbol and, you know, extracting the, the information from it like okay which typography is used and and so on um yeah I, I you know i'm trying to think if i am forgetting any anything but i think that's it and regarding the iphone 10 support which people uh, are asking me also a lot so i think it's undocumented but uh, react native is providing a component called safe a rear view directly out of the box with the latest uh, react native versions 
So let me see a place where it's used navigation bar again. So yeah, you can import it directly from React Native and use it uh, in your code. What this uh, component does, it adds uh, paddings to either the top, the top or the bottom of your uh, screen and in order to protect the safe areas. And this, for the top part, it works, of course, for any, any device. And for iPhone 10, it also has some padding at the bottom to, to, have, to create some safe area. And what I'm using as well is if you need a safe area in a model, so this only works, so this doesn't work if you're in a model. So if you want to, to have the safe area in a, in a component, which is like absolutely positioned, um, safe area view from React Native doesn't work. So I'm using safe area view from React Navigation, which, uh, so which works in the model as well. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, let me know what you guys think about this topic of uh, theme and customization. You know, I'm, you know, maybe I'm missing something. If I am, please let me know. And I hope I didn't forget anything. If you have more questions, uh, please go ahead and comment on the, on the YouTube channel. And I'm looking forward to do a, a new coding session with you guys soon. So talk to you soon. Bye.